I just want to show you guys the coolest little turbine engine. Okay, it's from 1948. Perfect example how these work. So here it goes. This is the axial compressor. Why axial? Because it compresses in an axis this way. It doesn't compress linearly. You can see that the compressed air in the blue comes up here. That's where it builds pressure and the pressure is fed into burners. So that's a can burner. It's called a can. This little motor has two. Here's one, here's two. So compressed air goes into here and goes on the outside of the can for cooling because otherwise this would get really hot. And on the inside of the can, this is the burner. So fuel comes from there, right? So there's the fuel manifold comes from the fuel pump, right? So fuel pump, manifold, boom, sp spreads it out both ways, ends up into the can. I mean, how simple is this? right so inside the can there's uh, igniters there's an igniter right there there's uh, one or two those are the igniters there should be some on top let me see if the other one has them yes so typically you got uh, one igniter that makes spark and there should be a backup so here's an igniter maybe that's not igniters maybe that's something else maybe that's uh, Hell, heck if I know. But here's the igniter, so I, I assume this is your distributor, kinda. Makes spark right here, and then spark for the other one. But inside it, the flame happens. And the flame, it's a pretty much a, a burn. The hot air's gotta go places. I, you can see that it's hard for the hot air to go backwards, whence it, from where it came from. But it's easier for the hot air to expand out the back. So it expands into this manifold here and it hits the uh, stators. And these are hot as, as hell. From the stator, it goes to the turbine. So this is a turbine wheel. See how it spins? Okay, so the turbine wheel is directly related to the axial compressor. Watch what happens when I spin the compressor, right? There goes the wheel. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So here you have some accessory box that spins and powers things like maybe the oil pump, the generator, the fuel pump, and something else. It'll come to me. Also a way to start it, right? So you have to have a way to spin it up first to give it initial RPM to light a fire in it. So those are called the accessories. So this whole axial compressor to the turbine is called the N1. Don't know why it's called the N1. But after the compression, the burn, the expansion, these are stators. So you see how the stators, there's the coolest thing. They're little wings, right? So they, they direct the airflow into these cups, into the cups of the uh, turbine, and the turbine spins it back up. It kind of goes straight, but then it hits these other, this other uh, stator. So what the stator does is it directs the uh, the hot gases to the uh, business end right so all we're trying to do is spin the shaft to maybe couple it to a propeller or to um, a gearbox so a gearbox would go into the helicopter but this from here on to here it's free it's uh, there's nothing that connects this to this so this is called a free turbine, a free turbine, there you go. So this is the N2, so N1 turbine, N2 turbine. All this turbine does is it spins at something like, we saw in there like 36,000 RPM, and then it will put out uh, something more usable like 2,500 RPM. That's a typical propeller RPM, 25 to 3,000. So it's roughly a 10 to 12 to 1 reduction. And the way you get it is this spins at low torque, really fast and low torque. So if you guys know what, what that does, um, you can take low torque and gear it down. Look at, all, look at this gear. So 
I know that's a like a sun and moon or whatever you call it, planetary. I think this is a planetary. Um, but what is this one? If that's planetary, where it has something in the middle, like the sun and the planets spinning around it, one, two, three. I guess this is a reverse planetary because the planets are way larger. Anyway, all it's do doing is amplifying uh, torque. So reducing RPM, that's all you're doing, reducing RPM. So this spins this little tiny thing, which then goes to the big gears, which amplify or reduce RPM. These big gears go to smaller gears, which spin this big gear, which further reduces RPM to your final drive. So this is hooked up to this. Uh, so this is not connected the shaft is not connected to this shaft. They're separated somewhere in this bearing. Um, and, oh, by the way, once the air goes hot to medium heat to the N2 turbine, now it's to the exhaust. So hopefully, uh, this is called a uh, gas turbine. So the efficiency of a gas turbine comes from taking cold air, heating it up, and then taking as much heat out of it because that's what how you get energy you take the heat out of hot air and you exhaust it out through here which is your exhaust so um, this isn't as efficient because what we're doing nowadays is we have maybe two and two turbines and three of these in a row right because just you're just trying to milk every last uh, piece of energy out of the velocity that comes out of here so um, like I said, the N2 turbine will then spin this sun and planetary to planetary and sun, and there's your output. That goes to your propeller governor or equipment. I think these things are further accessories, like maybe that's a governor. I can tell that uh, right there, that's something another accessory but look at look at the uh, the ratio right so I'll spin this 90 degrees you can see how that spins so every 90 degrees look at this this barely spinning but it is you can tell it's doing it so it's I'm estimating about a 10 to 1 because I'll turn this like 9 degrees and this turn maybe like 6 degrees but look at all these spinning gears that is a lot and all of these have to be lubricated so they're sitting in oil like i find these these uh seals fascinating how they don't they're designed for long life they don't fail and look at the inside right this is the uh <laughs> the magic of a turbine is you spin the n1 which then after a while self-sustains itself by spinning the n1 turbine and the more fuel you give it the more n1 rpm you make right it's just the magic of of uh turbines like whoever came up with it is genius i think it's a guy named frank whittle from england but the germans are also doing these at the same time it's just they weren't doing axial they were doing um no sorry they weren't doing centrifugal sorry that's centrifugal they were doing axial. I may have made a mistake. Okay, come. I just want to show you an axial. So the thing about axial, air, the air just goes in a straight line instead of being. Um, oh, what did I say? The other one was centrifugal. So here's the axial. Here's your burner cans. This one has a ton of burner cans um, in a circle, but the axial has all these turbines this one thing has got one two three four five six uh n1 turbines followed by one two three four five six seven eight and two turbines and you see how it's just the air kind of goes in a an axis it doesn't get uh it never has to go uh radially but yeah that's an axial right here so here's one uh that is not an axial because it's got all the burner cans on the outside um, and this is your the most amazing centrifugal 
compression one ever. It's this one, which was also stolen by the Russians. Heck, here's an axial one. Shoot, look at all these compressors. And then there's your turbine, N1 and uh, N2. So yeah, this... Uh... Oh man, we could just nerd out like this on this shit all day. Look at this thing. So yeah, there's the most amazing one. And then there is another one that's also amazing. This was uh, made by the Americans to go into the that thing. So anyway, back to uh, to this baby. Just the simplest one ever. Very well displayed here. It's uh, just a genius little piece of equipment. I kind of want one in my house, but here's the cool thing. Boeing just spelled its name right on top. Here's the other side so you see what the finished side looks like. 